Hello and welcome back to the channel. So it's been a very busy couple of weeks and my number of subscribers has increased massively. So a huge thanks to everyone who subscribed, commented and followed my channel. Also, the poll that I put up regarding the next OS to put on here has proved very popular. I am a little surprised that it's so evenly split. I didn't think there'd be much interest in doing Tiny 10, but it shows what I know. So we'll be bringing Linux on this shortly and then following up with Tiny 10 to see which is the best way to go. So those of you who've been following the channel for a while may have noticed that my watch has changed. Atmon Vonalot certainly did, and he asked how I was getting on with it. So previously I was wearing the Cospet Optimus, which is a full Android watch running Android 7, I believe, with an 8 megapixel camera, capacitive touchscreen and independent SIM, as well as a heart rate monitor and other bits and pieces. Sadly, however, it has stopped charging. I have owned it three years, so perhaps it's done its time, but I'm going to try and fix it at some point. So I thought since I can't actually afford the new Optimus 2, which is what I would like to have, um, I would go back to my old DZ09. The DZ09 is a budget smartwatch. It has a capacitive screen, built-in VGA camera, pedometer, sedentary reminder, a micro SD card slot which allows you to store the photos, audio files, mp3s, voice notes and even use it as a USB thumb drive. It can also connect via Bluetooth to a phone allowing you to send messages, receive and make phone calls using its built-in microphone and speaker and even control the music on your phone. And if that's not enough it has an independent SIM slot so you can use it as a standalone phone. Which is pretty cool, right? When I bought my original DZ09 in 2016, it cost a mere £16. So this isn't just cheap for a smartwatch, it's cheap for a phone. Now obviously it's not going to be the most amazing quality for that kind of money and unfortunately when I went back to my DZ09 the memory card slot wasn't working so I had slightly limited functions. And of course the battery didn't work because it had been in storage for so long so I thought to myself I'd just buy a new one. So the first one I bought off eBay, that's right, I bought more than one, arrived in this generic packaging. It contained the smartwatch, a charge cable, new battery, and of course an instruction manual. The first thing to notice was that the screen was actually slightly smaller than my original DZ09. Everything else worked fine on this, apart from one thing, and that was the ability to make and receive calls and texts. It simply wouldn't connect to the network, or it would pretend it was connected to the network, and then disconnect when you tried to phone someone. So obviously I went online and did a bit of digging and this is one of the many fake DZ09s. In fact I believe this might be a G8. Either way the smaller screen made it nearly impossible to type messages because it had a full QWERTY keyboard instead of a T9 and on a screen this big that is very difficult to type. So after a bit of digging I found some codes which would allow me to check the IMEI code which is the code needed for it to connect to the network and is a unique idea identifier for the phone. Sure enough, inside the case is a label with an IMEI code, but it didn't match the code that the phone was giving me. So a little bit more digging later, and of course, I found a way of altering the code on the phone. However, this bricked it completely. Black screen, wouldn't boot, nothing, wouldn't charge a battery, recognize anything, dead, dead, dead. Never mind, at least I got a new battery, and now I could actually go back to using my DZ09. So I decided I would make a video on the DZ09 and unfortunately everything that could go wrong did actually go wrong. So to start with one of the pins for the battery connector snap, no problem. I'll just solder the battery in. However, that didn't work either. So then I decided I would do a teardown. So this is the inside of the DZ09. So I could compare it to my suspected G8. While trying to take it to bits, it was apparent that all the screws had rusted, so I had to drill them out. So it made this watch completely unusable. 
So here's my original DZ09, which here's the knockoff DZ09, which I've salvaged the straps from for this one. And what you'll notice straight away is that the viewable area of the screen is slightly smaller than on the original DZ09. This is the phone antenna, and there's a little slot in the strap where that would sit. If I flip this over, you'll see that once you take the back panel off, there's just four screws, and if you undo those, you can then take this part off, and that accesses the pegs for the straps. So the strap sits on those two pegs, and then when you tighten it up, it holds it in place. Of course, down here, we've got the memory card slot for a micro SD. Apparently, it will support up to 32 gig. Here is the SIM holder that's the usb port and the three pins for the battery so here we've got our first real difference physically other than the bit of tape that's on the uh, original dz09 and that is that on this module that is the speaker and in this part there is actually a motor to give you a vibrate there's no vibration on this and so the speaker is here they're not there other than that they look very very similar so I decided I'd buy another. Again, this arrived in generic packaging. Again, everything worked, but I will just show you that the screen is almost unusable on this. So this is attempt number two. It was from a different supplier. I'm just gonna pop a SIM card in so you can see what it does when it tries to connect to the network. And I'm also just gonna pop a memory card in. And on this memory card, I've put um, some music and a picture just so you can see. So we'll just slap a battery in. Jabs a good one. Backs back on. And let's power it on. So it's recognized the SIM. It says it's a 1P mobile. If I attempt to phone someone, it dials and immediately ends the call. And that's because it's not actually registering properly with the network. So you can't send messages on it and you can't call anyone. You can go to the menu by either swiping across or pressing menu. On the menu, we've got Bluetooth options, messaging, calls. We've got an image viewer. If I tap that and tap the image, I then have to choose view. It's very convoluted, but there we are. You can view an image. There's a calendar just so you can see what days are in the month. And you can slide through the different months by scrolling across in either direction. So moving on. We've got the camera. The camera is pretty poor. I'll take some actual photos later. Uh, we'll save the image. There we go. Um, we've got a sound recorder so you can record sounds. I've just put one in already. Um, but if we go options, record, we can record a new sound. It starts straight away. Once you've recorded what you want, just press stop. You can give it a file name, but as you can see, it's nearly impossible to type on here. Next up, we've got the audio player. So I have put some MP3s on, so it doesn't sound amazing. But given the price of this product and the size of the speaker, I don't think it's bad. There's a pedometer. The pedometer uh, allows you to run it in the background. So I've already started it. You can see it's been running for a couple of minutes. If you slide across, it shows you how many calories you've burned and how far you've traveled and bits and bobs like that. It's not particularly accurate. After that, we've got the sleep monitor, a sedentary reminder, and then we've got Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, a browser, and a QR code so you can download the app. The app works on this, but it's very limited. It gives you your battery and it'll do Find My Phone, but you can't control your camera or your music. None of the internet connected apps actually work, and that's because when you connect this to the internet, it does it through a conduit, and that conduit has shut down, so that organization's no longer there. One of the really useful things about these is you can actually connect it using the USB and use it as a thumb drive. So so that 32 gig card you put in there, you can actually download things too. I'll show you some more features on the other watch, mainly because this one's really difficult to use because the touchscreen layer is so bad. Ultimately, that meant that this could not be used as a phone and was pretty unusable as a watch. So I wasn't about to give up and found this one for five pounds. 
So I ordered it. Again, it arrived in the generic packaging, only this time the battery didn't work, but that was okay. I had a couple of spares. Also the roadbar hoops just disintegrated on touch. There was no battery cover. And within four days, one of the straps had snapped. So I took all those parts from the bricked unit and put them on my new one. And they fitted perfectly. So let's take a look. So I used the strap and cover from this one to replace on this one. You'll see actually this one is way more similar to my original DZ09. It's got the metal body, the similar switch, the same size screen. So let's start it up. And I don't know if you heard that, but this has a vibrate function, which is very useful because when you get a message, you don't always want it to make a sound. So this one connects properly. I can phone, I can text. If I go to messages, write a message, you'll see we've got a T9 entry input. And this isn't too bad to use. You wouldn't want to type a lot on it, but it does work pretty well. Once that's done, you just flip the keyboard down, go to options, send to, and then either choose from your phone book or from your SIM card. So pretty straightforward. You can also just save it as a note. In here, we've got call logs, Bluetooth dialer. Unfortunately, I've not been able to find an app to allow this one to connect to my phone. So I can't use the Bluetooth dialer or remote camera, etc., etc. Nor can I use the remote mailbox. There is a calculator. And this one's very easy to use. As you can see, the numbers are a lot bigger. It's better laid out. And the screen is much more accurate. Accurate. So pretty straightforward, just a calculator. Again, can't get the Bluetooth music to work. We'll come back to settings in a moment. And um, the pedometer on this one looks very fancy, um, but actually it just pretends to count steps when you're not really moving. So I often find that it'll count steps that haven't been done. See, so with no movement at all, it's just counting steps. So, you know, perfectly good if you just want a timer though. This one also has the ability to view previous records for your pedometer. Presumably you might get lucky and the pedometer might work on your model. Most of these watches don't allow you to look back at any of the data. After the pedometer, we've got a sedentary reminder. So it's just an alarm that goes off every 15 minutes. It's got a sleep monitor, although given the way the pedometer works, I don't think it's going to work. We've got a QR code. Unfortunately, scanning this doesn't take you to a usable app. We've got a calendar again, same as the other, slightly different layout. And we've got arrows to scroll across through the months and or years. Once again, we've got an image viewer. So that's the image I've put it in. If we go to options, you can play them all, you can rotate, and you can use as a wallpaper, a power on display, or a power off display. So I'm gonna pop it as a power off display. We've got a sound recorder. There's a couple of options here, a new list and settings. So in settings, you can choose where you want it storing and the audio quality. So we'll just make a quick recording. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So this is what the audio off the watch sounds like. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Here we can set alarms and under profile, we can choose various options for the ringtones and vibrate when people call or message. The audio player on here. Again, the sound quality is not amazing. It's unfortunate that you can't actually play it through Bluetooth headphones. That would have been so good. Um, but it's not bad for its size and obviously its relative cost. Once again, we've got a camera. I will take some photos and show you those later. There's a file manager so you can look through all the files. Again, none of the connected apps work. And we'll nip to settings. So under phone settings, you can set obviously time and date, keyboards, flight mode and this one allows you to alter the LCD brightness and um, at full brightness it is pretty good and it is visible in daylight although it's a bit of a strain if it's direct sun. We've got network settings, security settings and a restore function and that's about that. So we'll power this off, we should get our little logo. There we go. So once again, you can use this one as a USB key. Weirdly for this model, you have to turn it off before you plug it into the computer. So let's talk about the batteries. So battery life is actually pretty good. It'll last about 36 hours in standby. If you play music through the speaker, it'll run for about an hour and a half. And if you're making phone calls, it'll last about an hour. So actually as an emergency phone, it works very well. And if all you're doing is sending the odd text and making a short phone call, you've definitely got all day battery on there.
So here are a few snapshots from the camera. The weather wasn't great, but even so, I think it's very clear that the camera on this device is absolutely rubbish. So it claims in the data on the picture to be a 640 480 resolution photo. However, I think we can all agree that that's simply not true. When I took a photo with this one, it tells me it's a 128 by 128 snapshot. And this seems much more realistic. So I think this is a 128 by 128. And it's just the metadata that's been changed. So you're not going to be using this for your holiday snap. On eBay and Amazon, there's quite a few of these that advertise that it's got a two megapixel camera. I do wonder if this is true. So if you've got one of these, pop a comment below. I'd love to find out. Car quality isn't exactly amazing, and occasionally it does sound like you're underwater. For some of the models, including this one, you can pair with a Bluetooth headset. By doing this, I imagine it would improve the call quality quite significantly. However, I could not get this to connect to my Bluetooth headset at all. If you own a DZ09, or one of its clones. I'd love to know your experience. Perhaps you got a better model than mine. Perhaps it was cheaper. Perhaps you paid a lot of money for it and it's rubbish. Either way, pop a comment below. I'd love to hear your stories. Overall, I don't think you can complain about a watch like this, considering the amount you pay for it. It's great as an emergency phone or just for making those odd short calls or sending a message. Trying to buy one that actually works though is a bit of a minefield, as you can see. My advice is to look for one with a metal body, the slightly larger viewable screen area. And if there's any photos of it in use, make sure it's got the T9 input so that you're not trying to use a QWERTY keyboard on a one and a half inch screen. Other than that, good luck. On a final note, I mentioned that you can use this as a USB stick. It's worth just noting that actually the transfer speeds when I've tried it are way below one meg. So to transfer 10 gig, it was going to take four and a half hours. Now for odd files, that's absolutely fine. But if you transfer in films or any big files off your 32 gig memory card, you could be in for a long way. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a like and subscribe would be excellent. As always, my name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.